Hey, my name's Ben, and uh, this is my van, Clo. So this is a 1997 Astro van, and uh, I got it like three and a half, four years ago. the thing up from a couple Australians that drove across the country and brought it straight to Halifax where I'm from. At the time I was running my own business, a uh, treehouse board shop. I had my own skateboard shop and I was kind of like always at the skate shop and paying rent at a house at the same time. So I decided, hey, why not just live in a van and not pay rent anymore? The van's name is Clo because uh, I took the word Chevrolet and rearranged all the letters and it came out with the Clover. So. You know, Clo for short. Here's my swim shorts. They're permanently here because they never dry out. Um, you know, I often like go swimming, to, like at public pools and stuff for showers and all that. You know, the sauna is always nice, so they're just kind of like a permanent piece on my van. So in the back, I just kind of have pretty messy like clothing kind of setup. A little bit of food supply. My stove and propane is in there too. So it sets up right here and it kind of jams, like once it's set up, it jams really nicely in between. So I can even drive around and the stove won't move. I keep a lot of dry storage and I actually have done preserves in my van while I was traveling. Like I've made kimchi in Quebec and had it like fermenting across the country and then ended up eating it out here on the island. So this is called like a little tubby's wood stove. I got it from a guy in Nanaimo who just kind of makes them in his garage. And uh, I don't know if you can get around the side, but there's the front. It's got like a vent in there. It's made from an old uh, propane stove repurposed. You got a little heater pad, like if you want to heat up hot water for tea or something when the fire is going, that's like perfect for even just keeping food warm. And uh, yeah, I got a sailboat chimney on the top. You probably notice all the powder in the bottom, like one of the challenges I face. It gets really wet and uh, the condensation and the uh, you know, like rain comes in sometimes where my solar panels are like fed in through a wire. You know, it can build up underneath, so I like put a bunch of spill absorb under like the bed frame and that, so it, it keeps it from uh, taking off with like the potential of like mold, the dangers with that. It's like in a confined space, it's not super healthy to be <laughs> breathing in mold. So there's one of my batteries. It's kind of like a uh, little Jimmy rigged here. Charge controller. It's 150 altogether. It's it, like I never run out of lights or charging my phone, but if I use my uh, my computer and all the stuff, like sometimes if it's not that sunny, like I can run out of battery. I had a lot of friends contribute to painting the dash when I first got it. I was kind of just like at the skate shop all the time, hanging out and people would just come by, bored, didn't know what to do. So I just pulled up the paint and we started painting up my van. In the front, I got my my water supply here. Uh, pretty easy like you know you get like a $16 deposit on the bottle or whatever and then you buy one of those little pumps and it's like perfect you never run out of water you know I got my emergency pee jar up there you know that's something you have to deal with when you're living in a van you know you like wake up in the middle of the night everybody you know normally can just walk to the bathroom but if you're just somewhere random and it's cold you're just like man like I'm just gonna pee in a jar like you know so in my you know free time when i'm not at work or you know doing stuff outside of the van i'll like come in here i got like some games on my computer to play i got like a little setup for a recording studio so when i was in nova scotia i was making music with a friend there and then eventually you know i moved on and i took my studio that was in my apartment and i moved it into the van and this last time that i uh worked on the van i kind of built it so that it would fit everything right and like the speakers are in there tight. Velcro is your best friend in a van like you'll see everywhere either old like sticky spots <laughs> where the Velcro used to be or like spots for the Velcro to be like I used to have like a Polaroid camera that's stuck there and you know my laptop. <laughs> Got a little bus fan you know from the school bus remember that you're on. Sometimes it gets really stuffy in the summer, so you just need 
you know, something to circulate the air and get it out when the sun's been beating down on you for a while. I got a 1500 watt inverter here. There's another battery under here, but the mattress is kind of big and in the way, so you're not gonna be able to see that. This is like one of my favorite parts, and the last thing that I really did with the van was uh, install this like mechanism to hide my synthesizer. <laughs> Once I kind of filled the roof up with solar panels and a roof rack that couldn't hold like a surfboard. So I decided I'd like lose a little bit of headspace and throw it on the ceiling. So I just pinned it up on the, the studs of the, the frame and the ceiling. I'm surprised that the wood stove hasn't really uh, been able to affect it at all. Like I'll slide it up like to the front. You know, the only real danger in here is that wood stove. Everything else is really straightforward and easy, but as soon as you have a fire inside of a van, it's like, <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? How are you gonna keep yourself from like, you know, losing all your oxygen or getting smoked out or melting your stuff? When I uh, use the wood stove, I have to protect my, my light tube in the back because this gets so hot up here. So I just, you know, line it on there, and you can see where I've melted this already. So I just kind of moved it around. And <laughs> but yeah, so these lights, I took two LED strips and I took the backing and stuck them together and ran them through a tube. It's just a regular clear plumbing tube. I kind of uh, sanded it down a little bit to make it kind of pick up the light more throughout the whole thing and not just be like super transparent. There's two separate strips in here. So if I do this right, I can kind of like make them go differently yeah there we go so it's like kind of that like a candy cane look when I want to this is actually like my preferred setup for when I was in my my bedroom doing this because it just like goes anywhere it's pretty convenient doesn't take up any space and then it just like worked out with the van really well you know just clamps right on. So the construction started with um, ripping out the old stuff and kind of cleaning out the inside. I took some time to black out the window on the other side so you wouldn't be able to see like the backside of the construction from, from outside when the sun was shining. Me and my uncle started by creating like a frame for this to be attached to. So underneath there's two beams that go across and they're actually like, um, riveted I'm pretty sure into the like the frame of the van shell and then on top of that this is an old uh, sandwich counter board from like the deli part of a, um, a Sobeys I don't know if you guys have them that's repurposed from there um, that was the first thing was mounting the, the wood stove on that and like getting that hole figured out for the ceiling because it was really important that we get the wood stove right and then everything else could be built around it. And that was the only place for it to go through the ceiling that made sense to get like a good seal for water and stuff. So yeah, all I have for insulation for the most part is this, there's this thin sort of uh, pipe insulation that goes around. That's like all the way around except for in the back. Uh, underneath the bed there's a lot more insulation I have those flat boards that are like more rigid foam like probably like two inches thick underneath the bed after that it was just kind of a uh, means of just like setting up a frame and attaching it to the strong parts of the van without making any holes on the outside and putting in the uh, the tongue and groove boards it's kind of like wainscoting it's uh, like a kind of miniature version of what you see in a lot of like log log style cabin builds or like chalets or whatever but it's like really really affordable i bought two like big pieces of live edge that were um just like 15 dollars or something like that nova scotia people you know it's pretty cheap to buy wood and stuff compared to out here i have a kind of a low supply because i'm gonna be leaving soon but i got like just like, I always like fill up a little nut mix. I'm getting low there. Got some dried reishi mushrooms here for like mushroom tea and that. A lot of couscous in a van. Couscous is your best friend for like when you make stir fries and and things like that because it's the only like uh, grain or, you know, like filler food that doesn't take a lot of uh, time. You know, you just boil water and dump it in and you got couscous so I actually make my own pickles in the van so I still have a few jars of them now yeah, I mostly eat like fresh fruit and stuff so I got like bananas and oranges back here but I don't keep a lot of like canned food or anything like that 
I kind of like, I'm a vegetarian, so I don't really, I don't really need a fridge for anything, you know? Like, it's all like stuff that just sits out in the grocery store and you just like pick it up and eat it. So it makes it a lot easier with a diet like that to live in a van. Flexible, I don't even know what to call it. I guess it's like a curtain line. Um, I got it from Home Depot. You get like, it's like 25 bucks. You get like 50 feet or something like that. That and it's so good. Like all my curtains are on it. Curtains are, oh. <laughs> That's great timing. <laughs> um, yeah, so. It works pretty good if it stays on. Um, yeah, no, I just have a poncho hanging up right now. This is my curtain. It's made out of a couple scarves that are sewn together. So you just kind of like make stuff out of whatever you can find at a thrift store and then put it together and it looks nice. I live in a van because it's cheaper. I, I also find that if I get stagnant with like where I'm at and what I'm doing, I, I kind of like get a little kooky. I there's almost like a loss of sanity to doing the same thing all the time. I really enjoy uh, constant change and new experiences and setting your home base up in a vehicle that can take you wherever you want. It really makes it a lot easier to change your lifestyle. Comes with a different set of challenges, but it gives somebody like me that wants that a chance to do the things that that I want to do. One of the biggest benefits is there's a lot less costs involved with living in a van. Your rent's only as much as your gas and insurance and repair bills. And usually you'll have all that stuff anyway, even if you live in a house. So <laughs> it definitely uh, saves you money. It gives you kind of more time to do things because you don't need to work as much unless you're trying to like save a bunch of money or, you know, do something else with your resources. It forces you to do things. I'd spend hours on a computer in my room and like lose track of time, you know? And in a van, you're kind of just so out there that you can't hide from life, you know? You just, you have to go do stuff because it's just like you're, you're already exposed to it. You're already like immersed in it. Another challenge was kind of feeling like I was allowed to exist. There's a lot of places where you can't be or like people are like, you know, kind of like, against the the idea that you're living in a van i definitely like struggled with that for a while fortunately i found like more of a sense of community around here but when i first got to the island in november it was definitely like a strange feeling because for a while you're just traveling and there's a reason that you don't have any kind of connections or routes because you're just you know going town to town just driving across the country but once you're staying in the same place and you're just like not like fully connecting with people on like a a level beyond like you know, small talk, it gets heavy on the heart, you know, like humans want that deeper connection. So yeah, so I wouldn't recommend driving through the States for anybody from Canada. If you're like, unless you're just going down the West Coast, maybe, but like all of the trouble that I've had has been in like the Midwest and like, you know, central states. Like I've been pulled over for no reason, pulled out of my van, put in a cop car, searched. They thought they were gonna find me with so much up. Oh yeah, great guy with it, like a painted up van. Like he definitely got like drugs or something, you know? Like they like tried to tell me I was an illegal immigrant and like, like looking at my passport. Yeah, they just basically tried to like pressure me into like cracking, but I didn't have anything to hide because I'm not gonna like, I'm not gonna go to the States with a bunch of stuff, you know? Like it doesn't make any sense, you know? Like if you're from Canada and you wanna do a trip in the States, drive to BC first and then go straight down the west coast and come straight back up because everywhere else is hostile towards van people from my experience personally like i'm sure there's people out there that have had better times with it but me personally i just i did not get met well that's like that's my that's like the worst that i've had though like honestly i've never been bothered in canada i've never had cops bother me parking guards yes cops nothing like in canada zero presence from the police in my whole my whole time here. At first I was actually doing stealth because I didn't have the chimney. It wasn't that obvious in the in the front and I had a cover for the windshield too that made it a little easier but I think that people are like if they want to you know get in your business and and kind of you know try and stop you from what you're doing like they're gonna do it whether you're stealth or not you know like it's kind of 
you, if you stay in the same place long enough, people will notice, you know, like, even if it is obvious. And, like, I find some people, like, enjoy the boldness of, like, having it all painted up and whatever. Like, you know, it if, if I'm not trying to hide, it's almost like I feel like I belong. And when you show that you feel like you belong, people are less kind of, like, inclined to tell you you don't, you know? So, me, personally, I've been doing just temp work since I got to the island I just go on Craigslist all the time and find usually short-term gigs because uh, I don't need a lot of money to sustain myself so I will just like get a job for like maybe a week or like it's been as long as a month and uh, just work here and there and as long as you're not just wasting money on stuff you don't really you can kind of just you know do your thing and if you find something that works for you just like stick with it i i have no problem working like a full-time job living in the van i worked at a kitchen for two years in nova scotia actually before i came to the island and i was living in the van almost the entire time so for like anyone that's that's thinking of doing something like this i would say the first step is to just go for it like not 100 percent like sell everything you have and get in the van like it takes a while like i bought a van and i was just using it as my vehicle at first it's like little steps you know like you're gonna see this setup and like think wow like how do i get something like that but it's like this is like three and a half years of like you know learning about what i wanted in here and what i didn't need in here a lot of different versions of the van that you know didn't suit what i wanted i guess but i didn't know i didn't know until i I created it. Just buy the van that you think is going to be the right one. Use it for like a weekend like camping vehicle or something and then see if you you might get behind uh, a lifestyle like that. You know, maybe cut down like what how much you like depend on the things that you have in your house. I would, don't know if I would call myself a minimalist. Like I have like a recording studio and stuff in here but like I don't need a lot to be happy you know. Like I just kind of always want to move around and do stuff so like that's like kind of where a lot of my happiness comes from. Just like being being able to like change settings and change uh, dynamics in my life. So when when I realized that like having a van was the best way to do that that it just was way too simple, like it just made sense. With life, I find that everything's always okay, you know? Like, <laughs> even if you have like, maybe not a bunch of stuff or not a lot of money or not the best job or, you know, anything. Like if, you, if you're feeling like a sense of lack in life, like just remember like how many times you might've felt that way before. Don't dwell on it, but just like how you stopped feeling that way. Like it's always okay, no matter what, like, you might be in the worst situation ever right now, but like at some point it's okay. And like, as long as you remember that, you'll get back to being okay again. Oftentimes a lot better than okay, you know, like, <laughs> but no, I tell people that a lot. Like, you know, if they're going through rough times, like, you know, it's always okay. Like everything, everything's perfect. Just the way it is. We just don't always get the best part of what that perfect, you know, full, full scenario is. Hi, I'm Forrest. I'm Emily. And this is Ronnie, and uh, we're all part of the different media team, so if you guys enjoyed that Alternative Dwelling episode you just watched, there's a playlist popping up now where you can continue watching, or you can go to our second channel where we travel around in this 1989 Toyota motorhome that we restored. We have all sorts of videos detailing the build that we did, what our life is like living on the road. So go ahead and check that out in the description below.